pear vinegar is a fall favorite of mine. It's both light and fruity and not too sour. And with a bit of creativity, your options for making drinks from this are absolutely endless. So let's handcraft some artisan pear vinegar right in the kitchen. My name is Laura and welcome to Applewood. I drove over to Gabe's, which is a local closeout store, and picked up these mason flip top jars for fermenting the vinegar. On the left is the 2 liter 68 ounce, and on the right is the 1.5 liter 50 ounce. Since these are useful for so many things, I figured spending 13 bucks was well worth it. Today, I'm doing, um, I'm doing my pear vinegar, and the neighbor's pear tree is, well, it's, it's got a lot of pears on it. Unfortunately, all the pears are like high up at the top and I got to find a way to get most of them down because I don't want them, I don't want them getting wasted this year. It's, it's, um, it's free food, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I quite like pear vinegar and pear vinegar is really, really easy to make. So, um, I gathered up a bunch of pears, uh, a few days ago and they've been sitting outside. So I'm going to take the ones that are kind of rotting and then cut them up and I'm going to put them into this jar here and I'm going to fill this up with um, sugar honey and uh, some uh, uh, filtered water and I've got some that I'm already making or I, I should say that they're already sitting I, I put these together on Saturday so they're almost a week out and the ferment was beautiful, the bubbles are beautiful, and I've been watching them, and the ferment's slowly calming down, so when it calms down, you'll end up having something akin to pear wine, and if that's what you really like, you can go ahead and drink it, but, you know, I'm, I'm opting for uh, leaving it for 30, 40 days and letting it go to vinegar, because you can make a lot of really good Asian dishes. If you don't have, say, uh, rice wine vinegar, you could always use your pear vinegar and it would be really good in some salad dressings and stuff like that. So let's just talk pears today. So let's go. So here is my current stash of beautiful and very photogenic winter pears and I'm wanting to make a pear sauce and this recipe which is on page 145 of the ball canning book which is a pear bourbon butter. And this is why I bought the new jars today even though we won't be going over that right now. The issue I'm having is a good number of very poor pears, which I picked up from the ground and boy, I hate to waste these. So the easiest thing to do is to make a homemade vinegar and it's quite easy and doesn't require the more pristine pears that you would otherwise want to use for your canning adventures. And this is a lot and I'll probably have tons more. So let's get started. All right. I'm going to get started on washing, carving, and then I'm just going to simply show you because this is the boring part. I'm going to show you the uh, more exciting part when we get around to it. So let's get started. Yay. All right. So here's the mess I have left. Um, I suppose if you wanted to be really, really picky, you can take some of these pieces out. I've got plenty of pears, so wasting this much is not that big of a deal. And I've got this left, and I'm going to take my um stainless steel tapping tool and i'm just going to macerate these so that way uh i get a lot more liquid that's actually um that's actually pear juice i think next year we're going to get invest in a press and then we could just press these and that would just be be so much easier at this point So the answer is no, I don't measure this at all, not even a little bit. I just um, I just know that honey ferments very nicely, especially raw honey because it's got um, it's got things in it, probiotics in it that uh, red sugar just doesn't have. So I'm a little generous with that and then I'm just going to put sugar on this as well. So I have some organic sugar in here and then I just have a filtered water. And you want filtered water over um, uh, tap water because tap water has chlorine in it and the chlorine can stop the fermentation and that's what you don't want. So filtered water, bottled water, something that just doesn't have the garbage in it that they put in your tap water. And you're just going to fill it all the way up. And I'll probably, I'm going to leave that space because uh, in the next couple of days, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna refeed it because what I'm gonna do is um, get a really good ferment going, hold the ferment for a couple of days, and then just let it go at this point. And this is what I've got. This is what it's gonna look like. This is a brand new ferment, and as you can see, this has got this beautiful yellow color going on. Now it's interesting because these are these are both different. I I did this the this one the day after this one, I think. This one's much sweeter, and this one is not. The flavor is not as um, pronounced in the pear as this one is. So the goal then is what I'm going to do, I think, is um, I have, where is that thing? Oh, it's right here. See? I think when these are at the point where I can, I can, uh, <clears throat> I can drain them, I'm going to put them all together in here and let them age properly. So I'll probably give these like two or three weeks and then they'll go in here to age and this one will follow soon after. And then I'm going to give it another month or so and just let it go. And I think when you do that, then they will all end up, because I just washed this, but what will end up happening is that they will all, all the flavors will merge and get a more consistent product. And that's what I'm looking forward to. For both the quality and the safety of your ferment, I highly recommend pH strips so you can accurately track the progress of your vinegar over time. A pH of around three ensures that the product is both shelf stable and will last for a very long time. Be sure to stir your ferment every day. Twice a day is typically better because you don't want mold growing on top of the fruit during the fermentation phase. And place a coffee filter over the top instead of a sealed lid. Vinegar really does best when it is exposed to air during the process and you don't want fruit flies in the liquid. Because fruit flies are unavoidable, apparently. And this is so simple and easy and quite the treat for switchels and shrubs and I know I look forward to having a stash of it every year. As I happily wait for the pear vinegar to properly sour, the leftovers in the garden, they just, well, they just keep hanging on. And I still have a ton of figs I need to preserve and I'm doing a whole host of jams that include red wine and others have peppercorns. And the pears are now becoming more and more numerous and I have people clamoring for pear sauce and I'm more than happy to share that. And as for a zucchini this year, I got a total of two. And if this one gets to full size before the frost hits, I will be completely shocked. So you ladies out there, the ones who have the homesteads, who have the four, five, six kids who bake the bread, grow your food, make your food from scratch and can. How do you do all this? Because I feel like I get home from dropping my son off at school. I've got 15 minutes to get anything done. I just, I am absolutely gobsmacked to watch you work and to be able to do the whole YouTube thing on top of that. I don't know how you're doing it. Please leave messages to me, says I. For your advice i would love to have it so if you made it this far i want to thank you for stopping by tomorrow oh wait a minute hold on hold on hold on i suddenly had an epiphany i am going to make some pear flavored sauerkraut i'm totally 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 going to do this and i will let you know how this turned out it's going to be a good couple of weeks two three weeks before this is done i might add some ginger i might add some cardamom either way i think it's going to be amazing so you need to stay tuned because I have extra pairs and I may as well figure out if this is well worth the effort. Thanks for watching.